Hello everyone, it's your girl Miracle Sims and you're watching the GSL Talk Show. Tonight we're going to be chatting with Mr. Jay Spiller. He's an author, a force creator, and much, much more. So stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSL Talk Show. I am here with Mr. Jay Spillers. How are you? Well, I'm doing great. Well, How I'm about yourself? Great. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Look, I, I was saying earlier, I know we've gone through a little trials and tribulations, but I'm glad we're still able to go ahead and chit chat right now. Where Where are you? I live in Anaconda, live in Anaconda Montana. Montana. Mm. Okay. okay. It's cool. a. Uh, Near Butte, Near Butte Montana, 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 and, and maybe Missoula's Missoula not, is not too far. It's like a hundred like miles. miles. Oh, okay, okay. Are you um, born and raised there? No, originally, no, originally I'm from, from Southern from California, 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 Orange County, Orange California. California. Okay, okay. Well, please uh, introduce yourself. Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you have going on. Yeah, my name yeah, is Jay Spillers, and I've and written, I've written um, four, um, books. four books. One's on, one's like, on the like the Bible, Bible and the near-death near death experience. experience. One's on meditation. One's on meditation. And, I and I wrote a wrote devotional a called Walk as Children of the Light. Of the light. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote another wrote book another under book under, uh, under uh, a pen under name about private cities and things like that. And I have a podcast of my own called Inspire Me with Jay. And, and I have an online, have an course, online on course on meditation on, on, on Udemy. Udemy. So. so. Awesome. Well, listen, it sounds like you're going to fit right in with the GSL family. And <laughs> welcome, by the way. My apologies mm -hmm. for not saying that earlier. <laughs> I know it's your first time with us. So, yeah, I would love to hear more about all of those things. And, you know, what inspired you to write your books and everything like that. So you say you had a near-death experience. Is, is that Oh, no, I didn't no, have a near-death near experience. Death experience. I've, always I've always had an always interest, had an interest in near-death near experience. Because oh. it started, I'm 51, I'm 51 right, right, now, right now, and it started when I was 11. Because I, I was watching the show called That's, That's Incredible. Incredible. This, this is like back, back in 1983. In 1983. And they were talking about near-death experiences and people that went to heaven and they saw God and Jesus. And I was kind of blown away by it. Mm -hmm. and, I and I called like this like Christian this radio, radio station, station and asked, and, asked, and they kind of poo-pooed poo it. It was, it was called the Bible, Bible Answer Man. Man. So, so I sort of put it on the back burner till like, like the late, late 90s, 90s, around 98, because I started having, started doubts, having in doubts, doubts in my faith, faith. And, I and I started watching and learning, and reading more about the near-death experience, and I started to see like parallels between that and the Bible, like some of the description of like what they would see. They would see, you know, like golden gates, and they would see gardens, gardens and, different and different things and they'd see and jesus, jesus and, and sometimes, sometimes they'd see they'd loved see ones loved but i saw like saw lots like of parallels parallel between that between and the bible and, the bible. Mm -hmm. and it seemed and it to confirm, confirm the bible because every, every time they brought up the subject, the subject of like, of like who, is who is jesus they would they say, say jesus is the son of god or is the bible divinely inspired the answer was always in the affirmative so it seemed like it confirmed my faith. my faith and there's, and there's a, lot a lot of christian, christian apologetists, apologetists that, are that are starting, starting to pick up, up on it, it. so no, it's kind of it's exciting, kind of exciting thing. thing oh yeah i mean there's definitely a lot of exciting things uh you know in the bible and then um you know i'm sure a lot of people are familiar with this concept that you're talking about because you know i think everybody may have heard at least now in the internet age right it's easy to get access to these type of testimonies and things of that nature and it's just very interesting because sometimes, um, I guess I think about the fact that sometimes people feel like, you know, miracles aren't happening today and stuff like that. But then when you hear about these testimonies and when you hear about like people that are on their deathbeds and, 
you know, why they're getting surgery and things of that nature, right? It's like, well, at the end of the day, no one can ever take away someone's testimony. So, I mean, we can all decide whether we want to believe it or not and stuff like that. But, um, you know, that person, you know, knows what they experience, I believe, at the end of the day. So, I mean, I think of all of, all of us may have had some type of curiosity when we hear those type of stories, you know, wondering, are, are they true and, and different things like that. But I guess there's only way to, to truly know, and that's <laughs> when we're having our <laughs> own experience, right? So, so but mm -hmm. your search has led you closer to God. Is that, that that's what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there, yeah. Was, like, and there was like, in one of the, in chapters, one of the chapters in my book, in my book it's, called it's called Heaven's Truth, Heaven's the Parallels Between, between the Bible and the Near-Death near death Experience. experience. I talk about I talk like about three, like atheists, three atheists, atheists that had, had near-death near death experiences, experiences and came to faith in Christ. Christ. Two of them two became of pastors, pastors and one of them became one an evangelist. An evangelist. Wow. And, and I thought that I that was that pretty, that was exciting. pretty exciting. Yeah, it is. Actually, you just made me think about, um, there was one morning I was doing some study, um, doing my, my daily study situation. And um, I was mem remembering some of the, or for some reason, I started to kind of look up some like, last words of certain individuals and um one of them was the gentleman that like wrote the uh atheist bible what i think started the atheist church or not atheist church the uh, church of satan and that type of thing mm -hmm. and if when you just hear what they say their last words is because there's no way for us to know obviously but still when you hear those those statements of what they said and and whatnot you're like I, I couldn't imagine being to the end of my life and then all the stuff that I stood for coming to, to see then when it's too late that, you know, it was all for naught or whatever the case may be. And so, I don't know, like, um, so yeah, it is great that those gentlemen that you just mentioned, or I don't know if they all were gentlemen, but those that you just mentioned, um, you know, had that chance, right, to to come back and then change their mind and you know, get on the Lord's side, become evangelists, become pastors. Um, sometimes it takes that, right? You know, just mm -hmm. that that last little <laughs> chance of hope and to turn things around. I know people go back and forth about like, um, you know, whether preaching the hellfire messages and all that stuff is good, but I kind of feel like, well, all of it's good. Like any way that God is reaching out to us it, at some point, you know, for those that receive it and accept it, it, it's a good thing. So kudos to those those people that, you know, got a chance to share the gospel and whatnot after their experiences. So so how did you feel as somebody that was kind of like, um, you know, maybe on the fence about your faith and things of that nature, and then you came across these stories and things like, like, well, what was it about it that kind of made you say, you know what, I, I'm going to put my faith and trust in Christ and then you know, ultimately to write the book and whatnot as well, the inspiration. Yeah, I've been a Christian, yeah, been a Christian since I was nine. Since nine. And the, it was and a couple years couple before years I even started, started, heard about the near-death experience. The near -death experience. So, I so I was already a Christian. A Christian. But it seemed but like it, it kind of confirmed my faith because sometimes, sometimes you'd have things, you'd have things like, like people, would people would see things outside of their body and they would go like in the operating room and they could see what was going on and then it'd be later confirmed or they'd go even to other rooms in the hospital or miles away and they could say i could saw this person and they were wearing this and they were saying this thinking this and then it was later confirmed but there's all kinds of evidences like that and there's miracles that have followed the near-death experience too like um mel and thomas benedict had, had uh, terminal, uh, terminal brain, brain cancer, cancer, and when and he came back, he came it went back into spontaneous, spontaneous remission. He was basically, he was basically healed, of healed of it. So there's, so there's stories there's like that, like and people, that. Have, people had have had improved, improved vision and hearing and hearing things like that like with that it. With so, it. That's so that's another that's parallel another between parallel the Bible. Between sometimes, sometimes you see miraculous, miraculous things, things going on from this experience. That's true. And that, that's the interesting thing, because like I said earlier, sometimes people feel like, you know, miracles aren't for today or this is that isn't happening today. But then you do have these testimonies. And I mean, you know, outside of a miracle, how can you explain it? You know, so and look, I know I'm, cause I'm saying miracle so much. Oh, my name's miracle. But still, I mean, you know, um, I think there's just so much power in, again, the testimonies and stuff. And, you know, God is still working, you know, every day. And so sometimes you got to just Pay attention, you know. <laughs> so, so what would you say the inspiration was then when you were uh, creating the first book? Like, was that your first book that you wrote? 
Yeah, yeah it, it was the first book, and I wrote it in 2020. And I think my inspiration is I've just always been interested in it. But then after my like my dad passed away and my mom, you know, I got even more interested in following the near death experience because he passed away in 2010, she passed away in 2013, and so I'd always wanted to write a book, but then it finally happened in 2020 and just went from there. Got you, yeah. Guys just shook up so many things in 2020 for a lot of people, so. Um... No, I finally got a chance to publish my books and whatnot in 2021 as well. So I'm I'm grateful for everything that happened in 2020 because, I mean, I know it wasn't good for everybody, but for a lot of people, it was kind of like eye-opening, a time of renewal, time to, you know, be creative and all those different things. And so so your first book came out then, right? Mm -hmm. So then um, what was the next book? What, what was the next book in inspiration? Well, the next one well, the was, next on, was on... Um, um, Meditation. meditation it's called it's meditation, called meditation for, everyone. for everyone and it's just basically it's just like basically a like beginner's, a book, beginner's for book for meditation and how to start and i'm actually, and I'm working, actually on working on a couple other couple things other like things. one of the things i, things I, want, to I things want to do is a christian, is a christian, meditation, meditation, christian meditation where i kind of, where I kind of focus, focus on like the on fruits like of the holy spirit and put it in like a 30-day program and go from you know do like a book and i want to do like a course Oh, okay. Awesome. And now I know you mentioned you already have one out as well, right? So um, is that the one you're mentioning or you're saying an addition to the one you have? Yeah, in addition, yeah, in addition to, to, I have a, I have a, a, course, a course called, called meditation, meditation, basics meditation Basics on, on Udemy. Udemy. Mm -hmm. And that's and a real that's basic, a real one. basic one. Okay. Okay. So how, how well is it going? I know I know courses are a very popular thing right now. Is it going really well for you? Um, well, I've only well, gotten, I've a, few gotten a few students. I'm trying, I'm to, get trying to get more students, more students you know. Okay. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get students and things like that. Mm. I just got to get the word out, you know. So yeah. what can you tell the people uh, about the importance of Christian meditation in particular? Because I know people might hear meditation and they, they think one thing, but, you know, I believe Christians can meditate as well. It's just what are we doing? Like, I usually use a guided... Um, there's this app that I kind of use every morning, but it is a Christian guided app. It's not like anything else so weird. So like, what would you say to people that are kind of questioning that, that concept? Well, with meditation, well, with meditation it gives you a chance, you a chance to, focus to focus on the things, on the things of God. God. You, can you can focus on scripture, on scripture and different and principles in, in the Bible. In the Bible. And then it and gives then you a chance to, chance to sort of, sort as you're deeply relaxed, relaxed, to just sort of just commune sort of your, spirit your spirit with God's with spirit. God's spirit. Mm. And I think you can, think grow, you can grow really, really close, close to God, to God through, through the practice, the practice of, meditation. of meditation. Oh, yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. So um, what made you focus on this particular, you know, gift? Well, I've been meditating, well, been meditating since, since 2005, 2005, and I just am I sort just of self-taught self and, and have looked at different, looked different things and... Things. Meditation's Meditation kind of helped kind of me a lot because it can help relieve can stress help relieve and anxiety, stress and anxiety give you a greater you peace, peace and sense of well-being. Well so, so that's what, that's sort, what of sort of got me interested, got me interested in, it. in it. Got you. And so then what, what about the whole creation for, you know, helping others to, I mean, obviously I'm sure that like by you doing it, it brought you peace and then you want to share it. But like what, I feel like it's always something a little bit more when it comes to those that feel like, you know, teaching it and, and sharing it on another level besides just, hey, buddy, this is what I do. So when it came to your book and your course and things of that nature, and even the future course, you know, obviously it seems like it's something that is, is you know, resonating a lot with you and whatnot. So what would you say that that inspiration was? Um, well, I think I'm well, really, think trying, really to trying to help people, help people change, change transform, transform their life. life. I want to see I, I, think oh, I think there's a there's spiritual, spiritual awakening going on, and I want to be part of that, that. and mm -hmm. I want to help people to connect to what's going on, what's in, going terms on in terms of the spiritual awakening. awakening. And I wrote a and devotional, wrote a devotional book, book, too, called uh, Walk, as Walk as Children of the Light, light recently. recently. Mm -hmm. And so, and so I, just I just want to help transform, transform lives. lives. I feel a calling feel for that. Yeah, that I mean, I, I agree. There's definitely a lot going on. And that's the interesting thing as well, where I don't know, I don't necessarily go, you know, 
pay so much attention to titles and things of that nature, you know. But uh, one thing I would say that, it, you know, since my journey in 2020 and launching this and, you know, taking time every day and different things like that, what I feel like, what I've resonated with at least or found some peace in is this idea of being a watchman. And at the same time, it's kind of weird because I feel like I'm seeing stuff and hearing stuff that people, other people just not paying attention to. And I'm like, how can y'all not see it here? This stuff, this crazy stuff is going on. Y'all don't see, like, I mean, I know people have always said, you know, we're in the end times and stuff like that. But I feel like there's something hmm. definitely a little bit different about now than, you know, before. And I, I know everybody probably has that testimony to a certain extent. But I I mean, but for you to, to also say that, hey, you know, I'm noticing something right now happening too. this awakening is happening, different stuff is going on. And, you know, you want to be part of the change in people's life. I think that's a beautiful and great thing. And, you know, it's glad to, I, I know there's other people as well that see and hear. So I'm not saying I'm the only watchman or something. You, you know, I'm sure you are one too, obviously, because you're you've seen and heard and heard God um, God uh, call and tug on your heart to do these things. Um, but I don't know. Is that something that you have observed as well? Like you you're receiving something from the Lord. You're trying to share it. Other people aren't seeing the importance, or they're not seeing the things you're seeing. Like it, it is that something that you um, can resonate with as well. Yeah, I think yeah, so. I think and, so. And, and I was just, I was just to trying to share what, to share what I've, I've learned, learned to help to help change, change lives, lives as well, and well, you know, grow and in the Lord and things like that. And it seems like, you know, it seems like, you, know you, know, you don't really know what's really going on in the world because, you know, you just had this COVID thing. And then it's and like then there's, there's like this war brewing in Israel, Israel and stuff and like that. that. And, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, like it's like the whole world's, the whole world's turning, turning against Israel. Israel and, and you kind of wonder, wonder, you know, because you look at some of the things that are going on. I don't really know sometimes what to think about it because, you know, we are supposed to be supposed like, to be like for, Israel for Israel and for the Jewish, for the Jewish people, people, of course. Of course but, but can you separate, can you separate the, government the government from the people? From the people and, and, you know, you know that there's going to be a war with, Israel, war with but Israel, but does it necessarily, does it necessarily, mean, that necessarily mean that Israel is automatically, automatically the good guys, guys and, and everybody else is, else is you know, you evil? Know, or, evil or, or, is there, or is it more complicated than that? Yeah, that's the thing. I know I've, I've been seeing some of the posts and things as well. And it's just very interesting because on one hand, you know, people are like, oh, you know, pray for both places and this and the other. And then some people are like, oh, no, only pray for Israel or, or the vice versa. Oh, I only, you know, I'm going for Palestine or whatever case it is. And it's like, but then when you read Bible and it talks about, um, you know, all these different things in some way. You, for me, when I see, I, I I feel like it's a great unifier because what Christ did is for everybody, right? And so everybody has that grace and mercy and free will to choose God and things of that nature because of Christ, right? But then, you know, this whole div division that is happening with all of us where it's like, it's for us and not for you and, and all this where you're like, okay, well, you know, are you truly believers if you believe that way? Because then, you know, I mean, not to say that these people can't come to Christ because they can, you know, um, even the people that have done the worst things possible, if they turn to Christ, I mean, they're still forgiven just like all the rest of us. So it's just, it's very interesting. Again, yeah, observing all of that and um, I guess trying to figure out where we stand on each thing and, you know, it's, it's yeah, I'm sure it's a lot. It's a lot, but um, I guess, I mean, I guess it's just, all I can say is just go with God and go with the word and, you know, pray for everybody, hopefully, you know, that at least some type of peace can be found in the midst of it all. Um, but I don't know. I feel like, you know, do you feel like we're closer and closer to revelations these days? Yeah, so, yeah especially so, the, especially, the, especially with what's happened, what's happened the last, the last month, month or so. Or so. It's kind of it's kind of wondering. Kind of it's like wondering, it's everybody, like, you everybody, know, even in secular you know, circles even is secular talking about is World War III about, about to happen. You know? Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, you know, and some say that technically it's already happening. You know, in regards to um, <laughs> not not just the spiritual warfare. I mean, we know that spiritual warfare is going on all the time, but I mean, like uh, maybe a war that people aren't paying attention to, like digital and you know all this type of stuff, censorship and all this. And so, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, again. It, <laughs> I, I'm seeing here things. I try my best to share and whatnot as well. It does seem like people, it's going over people's heads sometimes and you're like, 
well, Lord, what else you want me to do? Like, you know, what else am I supposed to do with it? But I just try my best to be obedient. It sounds like you're doing the same. So mm-hmm. I commend you. <laughs> so you said you have two more books to share with us, right? One about devotion and um, the last one as well. So I would love to hear about those. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the one about the one devotions about devotion is just called is just Walk as Children of the Light. Of the light. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just, uh, just uh, gets into gets things, into things like, like prayer, prayer, meditation, meditation reading, the reading the Bible, and growing and close, close to God, God and, and things that I've things learned. That I've learned. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, and the I, other, I, the other I, book, book. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. Oh, yeah. yeah it's just like, go ahead. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to cut you off from what you were saying. Um, I, I love that title, Walk as Children of the Light. I, um, that's another thing, too, that <laughs> kind of came through me in this study journey. And um, it's, it doesn't sound good, but I was like, well, this is what the Bible is saying, that unfortunately, we're not all God's children, right? I mean, yeah, we're all made in his image. Yeah, we all are capable of being God's children, but because of what we choose, we are not technically all um so we probably do have to be specific when we're saying hey walk as children of the light right um so um i'm interested i mean you might not you don't have to give us the whole book or anything but i'm interested to hear like what the lord has said you know uh to you through this book um to share in regards to to walking as children of the light um i share just a lot of um things like like the importance of prayer prayer. and like i have like a chapter on prayer prayer and and like um, um, making sure making that sure prayer, prayer becomes, becomes central, central to your life. To your and life. then I had the, thing, I had on the thing on meditation, meditation on meditating on, meditating on God, God and the scriptures and things of God. God. And, and um, um, I talked about, I talked other, about other things, things too, too, like, like um, um, kindness, kindness and, love, and love and just and being just a more being compassionate, a person. compassionate person. One of the important things I have a chapter on too is gratitude and how gratitude can transform your life. And focus, and focus you on God, you God and, God, then. so it's like each, so it's like chapter, each chapter is basically, is basically a, different a different teaching. teaching. Hmm. I mean, all definitely very important. I know people make light of those different topics like prayer and things of that nature, but you know, those are powerful tools and like they say weapons, right. To, to win the spiritual war, you know, um, sometimes I think we just try to take things in our own hand and things like that. But when the word tells us clearly to let God fight the battle and, you know, go to him and lay these things at his feet and things like that. And so, you know, again, the, the fight looks a little different as a child of the light, right? It doesn't always look like just, you know, the way other people fight, right? So, mm-hmm. hey, you know, again, well, thank you well, for... Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I was just going to yeah, say, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, some, I mean, like s- some things that kind of are, are helpful, you know, because, like, know, sometimes, sometimes to get started, started with prayer is, like, prayer before is you wake up in the, wake morning, up in the say morning, say a prayer, prayer you, know, you know, pray a little, pray bit, pray and a little bit, and then before you go to bed at night, bed night say a little say prayer, prayer, and then one thing that can help you, too, if you're if you not really into reading the scriptures is there's a lot of audio Bibles you can listen to online, and just listen to a chapter or two of that, and that can help you to get into the scriptures and praying. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I've had some guests, um, you know, share with me that they use scripture to pray. You know, they pray the scriptures and everything like that. I haven't really gotten into that yet, but I, I've always been saying that, that that's, it sounds interesting. You know, um, again, because a lot of times maybe sometimes we don't know what to pray and things like that. And so uh, there's a lot of different resources and ways like you even mentioned the audio um, Bible and things like that. So like the word says, you know, we have no excuse at the end of the day, especially us in our days and times. We got so many ways and access to uh the knowledge of the truth where like we really just don't have any excuse so then it's you were mentioning your last book it seemed like it kind of went in a different direction um i would love to share yeah i wrote that in her pen name. name oh yeah it because it kind of gets, gets more into just, just like the, the concept, concept of a private, private city, city and, and you know, you know communities, communities forming, forming that, that could be self-sustaining, self-sustaining. And, and, you know, different, you know, different models, models that could be that could there, there and, and for, for a private, private city. city. That, that is a great idea. I mean, I definitely, you know, with every, again, everything that was going on and stuff, I mean, it's crossed my mind a couple of times, like, you know, maybe I should try to figure out a way to get like a, um, 
you know, perhaps some type of, you know, like you just mentioned, a self-sustaining type of property, uh, just in case, you know, um, not to be like everybody should get their bunkers or something, but I mean, you never know, like, you know, if you're able to do something, um, you know, or you're called to do something along those lines, then, you know, perhaps it, it will be very important. So obviously you've written this book about, you know, uh, creating our own city and whatnot. So, I mean, I definitely need to know the mm -hmm. inspiration behind that. And then, you know, also the, the wisdom um, uh, of that, if you don't mind sharing a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, because oh, yeah, I was just talking just about, talking about um, um, it's, kind, it's of kind of like, like you see, all, you the see all the things going, things going, on, in going on in the world. It's, it's kind, kind of a place of refuge, refuge, a place where people can people find greater find freedom, freedom and, and like-minded like people, people that want to connect on certain things. Because I... You know, I you talked, know, I about, talked about, uh, uh, cities cities were, were, like, like, more about cities where there'd be more communal living or, or cities, cities where there's, there's a lot of different, different cooperatives, cooperatives that are there, there you know, like, you like know, a like housing a house cooperative, cooperative and business, and business cooperatives, cooperatives where people could do things could together. together. And, and there could be there cities could be where, cities you know, essentially you just join and, you know, it's very simple how it's run. So... I mean, they are definitely all sound like great ideas. It's interesting you um, bring that up as well because earlier this morning I was um, studying about this this concept of gathering. Right, we we're struggling with whether we should come to church all and stuff like that. Oh, I got my, you know, I get my whatever I need online or whatever, and you know, but God calls us to come together and you know the fellowship and all of that is just so important and it's become somewhat of a lost art sometimes where. You know, it's like you got to push and pull and tug for people to join you at church or whatever. And so, again, like how much more powerful would we be if we if we did come together and then be able to, you know, make our own self-sustaining cities and things of that nature? Um, you know, a lot more people probably survive. A lot more people, will, you know, uh, again, the, there's something to us being together as well. And I feel like that's why the enemy tries to keep us separate and apart, you know, um, and isolated and stuff like that. Because um, I know I gave the example in my um, inspiration this morning was that like, you know, it, say for example, we're, we're all in a place where, you know, all we have is one little bit of food. But if we all came together as a community, you know, we have a, a, a you know, a meal there. We have a variety of food that we could all just kind of bring if everybody had one thing you know so but we're just so out of I feel like America in particular I guess is kind of out of that loop I feel like we only we might come together on holidays families or you know like that as well and mm. so I mean I hope and pray nothing happens right now because I don't think anybody's yeah. ready right but um yeah I think other some other countries they might have us beat in that category of like being they already are kind of communal and, and stuff. So, so would you say that that type of thing is the inspiration and, and the reason why you feel like it's kind of important to not only just create the book, but build the cities? Yeah. 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 And, yeah I and I think three, three things, things that are, that are important, important and I think and are going to be important, important in the future, are just, just, we're going to have to strengthen families. families. We're going to have, we're gonna have to, to strengthen, strengthen faith, faith communities, communities and be, be more part, part of, of a larger a community. community. Mm -hmm. and, I and I think sometimes, sometimes that's why that's people why get people nostalgic get about the past, past is they see more, more greater, greater faith, faith family, family and community. And community. You know, they, they obviously weren't perfect, weren't perfect, but those, but those three, three things, things is good things good to things focus, to focus on, on, you know? Mm -hmm. And these are the number one things getting attacked as well, whether people are seeing it and knowing it or not. And that's the crazy thing as well. It's like, how can you not see what you just mentioned? The faith, faith has been attacked, family has been attacked. And then, yeah, communities as a whole, you know, so, you know, hopefully we'll all see and be able to, you know, get better about it and stuff, because um, as you already mentioned, there's a lot that's definitely going on. And so, yeah, I mean, sounds like you, you know, maybe you've created some books, you know, ahead of your time, as they say, <laughs> or or maybe even right on time. How, how do you feel? Yeah, I think yeah, it's I think right it's for right this, this time. time. And I think and it's going to be important as the years go forward, go forward too. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. So I know you said that there's a course coming. Is there any other things that we should be looking forward to? And and yeah, tell us about the podcast and, and you know, the things that you're kind of sharing on there. Yeah, the, yeah, podcast, the podcast focuses, focuses a lot on, on um, general, general spiritual, spiritual 
concepts, concepts and, it and it focuses on like, on, like the, the near death experience in the Bible, Bible and meditation and, meditation and, and so it's, so pretty, it's pretty it's pretty open pretty in that open way, that but I try to give something, something, of, something value of value back to people, back like, I'm people like I'm trying, trying to do with the books and courses and courses things like that. Like that. Mm. Nice, nice. Was there anything else you would like to share with us before you go? Yeah, yeah um, um I just I say, say try, try to, to start doing start things doing like things meditating, meditating and, prayer. and prayer. Try to, try to Focus, focus your attention, your attention more, more on God each God day, day, even if it's even small, small, even if it's even just if it's a just right a, when you get up in the morning or and go to bed, go at, to bed night. at night. But try to start try to the start process, process of focusing, focusing on God, on communing, communing with God, because I, I think communion, communion is, very is very important. important. I think that's one of the things about, about meditation, meditation is, is you slow down, down and you can commune with God. And I think that's going to be very important because sometimes we also just need to sort of de-stress. We need to basically take a break from the world and refocus our attention on what's really important. Do you have anything, and I know I'm going to let you go, but I was going to say, do you have anything for the people that are – um like doubting that you know i don't need this god i don't need this jesus this bible the, all this stuff y'all talking about like that's not something i i need like for people that feel that way do you have any words of wisdom for them well i think well, sometimes, I think sometimes especially, especially when you're young, young maybe you might feel, feel that, way, that way but, but you know, as you, you know, start, as you to, start get to get older, older and you start, you start to, notice to notice people dying, dying your, your parents, parents maybe, even maybe even siblings, siblings and things like that, like that. It starts, it starts to make, to make you really make question, question, is there a is there larger, a larger meaning, meaning of life? Of life? Mm -hmm. and, and when you start to, you start to, when you start to really you start want to, really to find want greater to find meaning and purpose, purpose in life, in life I think that's, I think especially, that's especially where, where God, God can, can come, come in and be important to you. But even if you think you got everything figured out, you can find greater meaning and purpose in God through Christ. Amen. Well, could you uh, share with us about, you know, where can we find you, your books, your podcasts and things like that? Yeah, yeah. my podcast is on Spotify and it's also on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel and you can find me on, um, I have a couple Facebook groups. One of my Facebook groups is called The Bible and the Near-Death Experience. Another Facebook group is Meditation for Everyone, which is the same as the title of one of my books. One of my books. And that's a and good, that's place, a good to place to find me is on Facebook. On Facebook. And, and um, I'm also, I'm on, also Instagram on Instagram and some of the other, and ones. The other ones. And you can find, you can my, find course my course on Udemy. And, Udemy. and my books and my are all, books on, are Amazon. all on Amazon. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much for visiting us and sharing about the work you've been doing. I commend you for stepping out on faith and creating these materials and everything like that. And I pray that, you know, people not only support you, but are able to you know, do what you're creating it for to grow closer to the Lord in their faith. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for watching the GSL Talk Show. And thank you to Mr. J for joining us tonight. I hope that you all enjoyed this conversation. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And check out Mr. J and his investors. Have a good night.